Mass, extreme durability, extreme handling, terrible. Acceleration, terrible. Top speed, terrible. Sold. <laughs> Oh, God, I missed a turn. Did everyone miss a turn? No, only me. But not anymore, buddy. Not anymore, bro. Get in there. Oh, God, I'm in oncoming traffic. Oh, God, my attempt to destroy Nicholas ended so badly. Boom, get out of my way. Oh, how am I into oncoming traffic again? Not the same river. Damn it. We can't keep wiping out the same river, guys. This is unsustainable. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the Microsoft Xbox Classic, known as Midtown Madness 3. This is a freeform vehicular racing game, kind of like with like Grand Theft Auto, only there are kind of goals, like you're actually trying to uh, race around to certain parts of the city, as you see here in the kind of uh, opening intro. It's sort of like uh, if you have an appointment, like a doctor's appointment, you're running late. This might be you driving to the appointment. That's basically what it's simulating, being late for something. Um, interestingly, this is the third game in the series. The first two were PC exclusives. The third one, Microsoft is in the console game, so they had the developer uh, produce the game. Oh, there's loops too. They had the developer produce the game for uh, Xbox to try and uh, sell the console. Um, the book, the Thousand One Games Was Played Before You Die book, Oddly enough, begins its review of Midtown Madness 3 by talking up Midtown Madness 1 and 2, and it even mentions they're better games. Like, not significantly better, but slightly better. It's really weird. Um, they talk about how the games, the first two games were revolutionary, they promoted the Microsoft Gaming Network, which is incre an incredibly quaint, uh, old-school gaming network. Do you guys remember MSN Messenger? Yeah, it's like the gaming add-on network to that way before Xbox Live. Um, but the, the review goes on, th like, this is a big bummer for us. It says, the game was built to promote online with plug-and-play simplicity of the modern network console. This is the book talking about Midtown Madness 3. What sets it apart wasn't on the disc when it launched. Instead, it was regular, substantial updates via downloadable content, a feature that would revolutionize gaming in years to come. Seriously? That's... Helps us in no way whatsoever. So I have the disc of Midtown Madness 3, but this game has not been live for decades. I mean, it's gone. It's gone. I find it incredibly odd that a book called A Thousand One Games You Must Play. This isn't A Thousand One Games You Should Hear About that were important historically. This is A Thousand One Games You Must Literally Play. Uh, they would recommend a game that they admit the best stuff came in its DLC, but there's no way to get the DLC anymore. I don't know, I just, doesn't, does that, does that seem weird to anybody else? Is it just me? Is the world gone crazy, people? Anyway, we're gonna be player one, I guess. Uh, I was actually trying to press the button there to change my name, but we couldn't figure it out. So we're just generic player one. That's okay. So here are the different kinds of uh, things you can do. Work undercover. The city needs you. So sign up for one of the most exciting jobs you can ever imagine where German racing stars and Italian movie producers are all in a day's job. So working undercover somehow. Am I a cop? I don't quite get that. Race against uh, time or opponents or why not cruise? Uh, go for a cruise downtown. Like the sound of that. Nice and, nice and free form. No pressure. Uh, multiplayer. You can play, I believe, local multiplayer on this. So you can't play online, but you still have the local multiplayer options uh, if they exist. I, I don't 100% know. I never really played this game back in the day, but um, yeah, I know for sure the online is gone. Is there anything cool under options? Uh, controller setup and stuff. Um, ooh, it can be in miles or kilometers. So we, do we want to be Imperial or metric? Uh, whatever, miles per hour is fine. Um, I'm, I'm always tempted to make it like kilometers because like Canada and the rest of the world operates on that But I know the American viewers prefer miles because they know what miles are and also I think people like in other in other places know miles I know miles mainly from back to the future, you know 88 miles per hour I know opens up uh, a temporal distortion that allows you to travel back in time So that's kind of my reference point. So anything less than 88 I figure isn't that fast So I think that's a pretty accurate way um, of sort of, uh, you know, thinking about speed. There's a bonus movie, a behind-the-scenes movie of Midtown Madness 3. We will skip that. 
Uh, let's go ahead and try a single race here. And so we can cruise. Take any car for a cruise and explore city. Who knows what you'll find? A blitz. Race against time with your favorite cars. Or a checkpoint. Beat your competitors to the finish line. Okay, let's start off here with a cruise. We're just going to explore the city a bit. Let's go ahead and cruise. We have two options, Paris and Washington, D.C. Now, the first game was actually based around Chicago, and it had a lot of the city digitized. Personally, I would rather be driving around Chicago than either D.C. or Paris. But I guess we're going to go with D.C.? So let's let's explore DC, then we'll do a race in DC, and then maybe, maybe we'll try that undercover mission in Paris. That'll be like our plan, our, our overarching plan for the day. So traffic density, very heavy, heavy, medium, light. Let's go with heavy. Pedestrians. Uh, I feel like we want a lot of people on the streets. I'm just saying cop density, zero. We want, we want the least police district of Washington, uh, D.C. Oh, you can even have, like, different seasons and stuff. That's actually really neat. Time of day, morning, noon, or evening, or night. Hmm. Let's do a morning one, I guess. And weather, clear, rainy. I like all those features. That's actually pretty cool. All right, and then we get our different uh, choice of car here. We have uh, the Beetle. We have the 1985. Oh, God, we got to race in that thing now. Ooh, the Astra. I like how these are just like budget sedans, you know? They're not like racing cars or anything too fancy. It's like it's like you legitimately were buying a, a racing car and your budget like factored in a 1985 R5, you know? Like you, you can get like a, like a hatchback. You can be driving a cab. Why not? Or a dump truck. Or a dump truck. Um, let's totally go with this thing because that's just ridiculous. And b besides, we're not racing or anything. We're just going for like a light... Light cruise. We got to get like a ridiculous color too. What's like the the lamest color we can come up with? I think like a like a gray. You know, uh, my grandma when I was growing up drove a gray car that kind of looked like this. I know there's like a little booster intake uh, on the hood for air, so it probably has like a nitro. It probably is like a sporty car, but to me this just looks like you know a Pinto or something. So we'll go for automatic transition uh, transmission because to this day, to this day. I'm uh, <laughs> approaching I'm approaching middle age, sad to say. Still don't know how to drive manual. It's uh, it's like kids these days who are never going to understand how to use a rotary phone. It's just going to be beyond them. They're never going to know what modem sounds are, like the boo, doo -doo 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 -doo. like those modem sounds we all grew up with when you were signing on to AOL or whatever. Kids won't understand, and I will never understand driving a manual car. Instead... I only know how to drive automatic. I mean, we live in a day where the, f the phones in your pockets are more sophisticated computers than... Oh, this guy has a, has a travel bag. They're more sophisticated computers than the computers that sent the astronauts into space. I think our cars can shift gears automatically. I mean, we're reaching a point as a society where we're talking about letting cars drive themselves. Imagine... Hold on. Actually, that brings up an interesting idea. Imagine you could buy a self-driving manual car. So it was a car that could drive itself through traffic, through a city, um, but it couldn't shift gears. So you had to be there kind of like shifting the gears. That would be kind of interesting. <laughs> and you know, you, you definitely have some car nuts who are like, yeah, you just get so much better fuel mileage like when you're shifting the gears, you know, for this self-driving car. <laughs> I mean, so I, I, I did have some friends who were really into cars uh, when I was growing up in high school. I feel like that's the argument they always made. They were like, you just get so much better gas mileage when it's manual and you can, like, shift the gears. I don't know. Is that true? I just always believe them because I'm like, oh, I mean, you get, you guys would know. I don't know. I don't know anything about cars. Ask me about how to install 8 megabytes of RAM in your computer and we can talk. But uh, in terms of cars, sure, I know nothing. I, I recognize my limits. Anyway, we're just kind of cruising around Washington here. Um, I don't know where anything is. I do not know Washington. Anyone who lives in Washington who might be watching this, can you? Can someone comment on the video? Is this accurate? Have I driven by your house? Does this look somewhat like Washington? Maybe we can try and like actually uh, make a point of like going to like a big landmark, and then we can judge whether it looks accurate or not. Can we run people over? I like that there are lots of pedestrians, but I haven't been able to hit anyone yet. Let's just go driving in the park. Where is everybody? I'm late for a doctor's appointment, and I got a hankering to run people over. Everyone keeps dodging. This is ridiculous. 
Like this guy right here, he was opening an umbrella. How did he know to dodge? I think I have a damage meter, by the way. Yeah, you can't hit people. You just go right through them. Uh, below my speedometer, you see I have like four yellow bars built up. That happened when I slammed into the wall, I think. Um, resume cruising. How do I... Oh, what the heck happened there? I just like reset my car. How do I get a map? It's got to be a thing, right? Is there a thing in this way? Oh, I can like change the camera. Uh, actually, I like this. Whoops, I like this view a little bit better. So, there's no way to like zoom out. Oh, you can turn the headlights on and off. That's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm looking at the map below me. Let's see. Um, that looks like a bridge above me. Maybe to like a highway. Maybe if we get on a highway. Excuse me. Whoops. That uh, that that is a wall. All right, hold on. We're gonna go like this. Also, again, I I'm really appreciative that there is no police presence in uh, Washington D.C. here. Just like the real Washington D.C., cops are set to zero, um, and you just kind of it's uh, it's really on the honor system in D.C. You know, I mean, if any if any city could uh, be considered to have the most uh, you know trustworthy citizens. Of course, Washington, D.C., right? I mean, what were you thinking about Washington, D.C.? I don't know. Um, we're going to zoom by all these folks. We're on some kind of highway-ish thing. I'm just going to assume that we're heading towards the White House. I know, like, the White House, the Washington Monument, you know, like, the the big Abe Lincoln statue. Basically, if they've shown it in a movie, especially Forrest Gump, then I, I know, I know D.C. Um, I once actually accidentally visited the White House. Um, I was on a road trip with some friends uh, in undergraduate, uh, in my undergrad, and uh, we were driving We were driving from Toronto down to Florida. We had, like, rented a car. It's a 36-hour drive, and there's four of us, and we were just sort of, like, passing off driving one after the other, and, like, people would sleep in the back seat, so we were kind of, like, driving straight. And uh, at one point, it was, like, the middle of the night, and we were all awake in the car. We were all starving. So we said the next exit we see, we'll get off and we'll get some food. And the next exit happened to be for Washington, D.C. And I guess it was like downtown Washington, D.C. So we got off and we're driving around and we're like, where's like the subway? Where's McDonald's? Where's, you know, whatever. Like we, we, we could have gone for a subway sandwich or something like that. Subway, not like the subway system. Um, and, uh, we were, you know, it was just downtown Washington. So we got out, we were like, we asked a few people on the street, like, is there a grocery store even nearby? And the people were like, uh, uh I don't know. I, you know, like, it's like, they just didn't even know the neighborhood they were in. And we were like, where are we? And then we looked around and we noticed we were like standing outside the white house. It was really weird. And we were like, oh, weird. So we like stop and took the, we took some photos and stuff. Um, there were like, uh, you know, Japanese tour buses of tourists getting off. I assume the people we stopped had no idea where anything was because they like didn't work down in that area or something or they just didn't know it I don't know but my random my random attempt to find the White House as I just drive around aimlessly in Washington DC is not going so hot I do notice there's a big grassy area to my left uh, but that looks to be just like a park out of the way beep beep pedestrians I'm a motorist um, all right I would, like, I wish that this had been Chicago. I feel like Chicago has so many more interesting landmarks that, like, I personally know, so I'm kind of, like, biased. Or, like, San Francisco would have been cool. But, like, D.C., ugh, I don't know. I guess it's a cool place. Oh, wait, wait. This looks like something. This is kind of a park. Hey, wait, wait, Is this where we were before? I'm getting so turned around and lost. Maybe D.C. has a bunch of these, like, uh, big circular intersections. All right, well, we successfully driven around uh, I mean let's say semi successfully because we did not find the White House that we were looking for um, I like how the description of this mode by the way was like drive around maybe you'll find something interesting I'm like I did drive around I didn't really see anything like that interesting like I, I was e I'd even settle for like a loop-de-loop -loop. like I wanted to find the White House but a loop-de-loop -loop would have been cool didn't find that either uh, every building just looks generic and closed. Civilians cannot be run over. That's a that's a major discovery, a disappointing discovery. Like these, all these people. This guy's carrying. This guy's carrying an Xbox. Oh, that guy's raising his hands. He's like, "Don't kill me, man." Um, meanwhile, look. This guy literally has an Xbox. Can I rotate the camera? Can you guys see that? Look, he's buying an Xbox. There's an Xbox in my Xbox. Is that meta? 
I don't I don't even know. He I, in fact, he doesn't even look like he's purchased it legally. He looks like he's fleeing with it. Like he's he's in a suit, a businessman. That is that is some weird marketing. Like, you know what? If you're playing this game on an Xbox, you've already, they've won. They got you. Microsoft sold you a console. Why are they trying to advertise? You know, who's playing this game? They're like, hey, that guy has an Xbox. You know what I need? A second Xbox. I, I, w I would love to be that guy, you know? I guess maybe it's like a fun Easter egg. It's like, oh, ha, ha, that guy has an Xbox. I'm being way too critical of this game, guys. Forgive me. Forgive me. Um, all right. Well, we can't find the White House. Let's just smash this car and see what happens. And then uh, once we've clearly failed this mission, we will go ahead and uh, we will try actually racing. Smash! Oh, I think the window broke there. Smash! Smash! This would be really scary. Somebody... Oh, yeah, the windows break. Someone just driving down the road, smashing their car into the side of a building. It's like they, they would have serious... That guy's a boombox. What? Oh, wait. Some guys are walking around with Xboxes. Other guys have boomboxes. What year does Microsoft think this is? What is this, like 19... Like, I don't even think those things coexist at the same time. Like, the Xbox was, like, early 2000s. I think boomboxes were pretty much out of style at that point. Pretty much out of style. This car is a beast. I've been trying to destroy it as best I can, but it is taking a beating, man. Two Xboxes! My god, those guys are going home to play some uh, networked Halo together, I think. As I damage my car more, it's getting slower and it's getting harder to damage. It's like the car is trying to preserve itself. And it's like, what if we limit your speed to just 20 miles an hour? What if we cut that acceleration in half? Oh my god, a jump! We found something. They said I would find something interesting if I tried long enough. And we totally did. Okay, here it comes in my beat-up jalopy that's having trouble accelerating. We that was that was not so that was that was less uh, less thrilling than I was hoping it would be. Okay, there's another loop. Found another loop back there. I've uh, got enough distance here. Where'd that where'd that loop go? Or no, it wasn't it wasn't a loop. It was a jump. Oh, get out of the way, <laughs> you jerks! Ah. Oh. Uh, I think that jump gets you onto that roof. I don't know if my car can accelerate fast enough anymore, but I want to give it one more try. Worst case scenario, we are successfully damaging our car, which is what I wanted. Okay, here we go. Build up some speed. Build up some speed. My car is barely able to get to 60. Oh my god, it is not going to make it. Alright, we got damaged out. I think our car is done. Is that it? Oh, what? <laughs> and then our car just regenerates. Self-regenerative cars. Okay. Well, uh, let's switch over to the, the checkpoint mode. But before we do, since we have a nice peppy new car here, let's go ahead and get this jump onto the ceiling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Into an alley over a tree. Okay, well, we did a jump. It was kind of cool. I think there was a second jump there to take you up to a higher part of the building. Anyway, so the... the, the, the I forgot how to talk. Oh, we almost flipped over. Anyway, so that's it for cruising. Let's actually go to a race here. I like how they give you an option to like restart the cruise. It's like, no, 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 man. Like that cruise is all wrong. We got to redo this. Okay, we're gonna go to Washington. We don't want a cruise. We want a blitz. No, we want checkpoint. We want to race against other cars. DC, Um, what are the options? Parktown, Tricky at Picky. Tunnel Racer. Ooh, that could be kind of cool. You'll never guess what you're going to race through in this. Uh, let's try that. We saw the streets. Uh, why not Why not try a tunnel? Um, and let's race in a dump truck. Edit license plate. Um, our oh, so you can just make whatever license plate you want? Wait, we're totally going to do that. Gamers! Totally 1999 radical dude. So that's how we, they know we're a gamer. Actually, I'm not gonna race in a dump truck. That's stupid. Let's do a real race here, like a legit, I'm gonna try. We're gonna race in an Opel Astra. Is that a good car, guys? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, do we see, wait, wait, do we see the White House on here? Is the White House here? Is it here? There's something in the bottom right corner, the ellipse or something? Let's see um, what you've got on the I need to like pull up freeway. a Google Maps of Washington DC. One, 
Go. Oh, look at all these people. Nicholas, Fred, Angela. Oh, Andy made it out. Sweet. All right, so this is how you race. Oh, God. Nicholas, Angela. L l l calm it down, folks. We, we, don't, no, we don't want anyone to get hurt here. Oh, God. I missed a turn. Did everyone miss a turn? No, only me. Okay, so we got to watch that arrow along the top. That tells us which way to go. Boom, boom. Andy, Nicholas, wait up. Guys, I'm falling behind. I don't, I, my character doesn't understand it's a race. He thinks it's just like a friendly drive with all his best friends. Meanwhile, these people like hate his guts. They're like, God damn, that Jay guy is here again. He's so freaking annoying. He's always trying to like organize ice cream after the races, become our friends. That's what I would actually do if I were like a, uh, you know, a no holds barred street racer. Like if I was in, you know, Fast and the Furious with Vin Diesel, you know, Vin Diesel like beats me in a race and he's like, it's not whether you win by an inch or a mile, bro. You know, it's who wins and you lost. I'd be like, yeah, I did. I'd be like, that was a good race though. Would you like to like get some ice cream with me afterwards? And he'd be like, dude, I just, I just screamed you. And I'd be like, yeah, but we can still be friends, right? I like you. You're cool. Um, basically I'd be the nerd of the movie. Uh, did I miss a checkpoint here, by the way? I totally did. Wait, is it up here? Where is this checkpoint? What's happening? Oh, I <laughs> I went through the checkpoint backwards compared to everybody else. All right, I'm now off-roading it. Uh, could this work out? Is this considered a shortcut? Uh, no, because there's a big wall there that I have to go around and it's eating up a lot of my time. Oh God, oh God. Angela has finished. Uh oh, Nicholas is finished. Uh oh, where's this checkpoint thing? I'm lost. Oh no, there's a wall. There's a wall between me and the checkpoint. I'm so screwed. Wait, can I? How do you reset your car? I did that once. Boom, there we go. Oh, so there is a button for when you get significantly lost like me. Wait, how do I change my camera? There we go. Uh, it's called select and it's for people who suck. Uh, I, I, you know, I was competitive in this race for a little bit, and then I totally got lost. I think we should try another race. These races actually aren't that long. Go for the finish. Go for the finish. I'm, I'm eighth of, of ninth. Wait, I'm, I'm eighth? Who's ninth? Is there a ninth place person? Or are they just being kind? There we go. Race failed. Race failed successfully. Okay, let's, uh... Restart race. Let's go to the menu. Let's try a different race here, people. Because that, that one was the, was no bueno. No good. Uh, let's go to Tricky at Picky. Let's go to Parktown. The first race has to be the easiest, right? That's how these things work. So I'm going to give uh, Parktown a shot here. You know what, actually, I honestly am going to do after this? Before we move on to Paris, to Gay Paris, uh, what I want to do is pull up a Google Maps and see, like, where the hell am I in D.C. and where is some cool landmark? Because I actually, I, 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 I like seriously want to drive to, like, the Washington Monument or something. You know, if they're going to go through all this work of digitizing D.C., I really hope that they, uh, that they actually digitize some cool landmarks. That guy's driving on the sidewalk for no reason. He's like, screw it. I'm just going to harass some pedestrians. Boom! Oh, yeah. That was actually kind of satisfying. Trying to ram him into oncoming tra traffic. I was playing nice before, Nicholas. But not anymore, buddy. Not anymore, bro. Get in there. Oh, God, I'm in oncoming traffic. Oh, God, my attempt to destroy Nicholas ended so badly. That ended so badly. Hold on. Restart that. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about what happened there for a second? I was trying to ram Nicholas in oncoming traffic, and that completely, completely backfired. I ended up literally... Uh, in a river. It's cool to know you can go in rivers. Now I want to push Nicholas into the river, but seeing as what ha uh, seeing as how successful I was last time, like w what happened when I tried to like harass him, I don't know if it's a good idea to try again. But how cool would it be to see like Fred or Nicholas just floating in that river, knowing that they they you know they effed up real bad. They ain't winning this race. Boom! Get out of my way! Oh, how am I into oncoming traffic again? Not the same river! Oh God! No! <laughs> Damn it! Are you serious? Twice, the same river, the same river. Okay, we we have to do better. We can't keep wiping out the same river, guys. This is unsustainable. This is not cool. Okay, 
Here we go. Two, one. I need Lakitu here to show me when to accelerate so I can get the, the starting boost. All right, off we go. Angela, Annie. Okay, we're, we're going to play. We're going to do it nice and kind this time. I'm not trying to ram anyone in oncoming traffic. I lied. I was trying to totally ram Angelina. Did not work. Okay, I, re I really got to get that out of my system because it keeps backfiring in, in like the worst way possible. Not where like I lose a bit of time, but where like literally my car is underwater. Okay, I think, I think we made it past the river. Okay, that's good. So we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Oh God, that river is just like following us the whole way. If I mess up at all, we this can end very poorly. Come on, Fred, out of the way. Out of the way. I like to think that this is like a gang of friends who are just like carpooling their kids to soccer, but they just realize that they're all late. So they're just like gunning it. Gun it and run it. Um, these these people are not like you know illegal street racers or anything. They're just it's just like a bunch of soccer moms. Actually, you know what? It wouldn't be the moms who are this late. It's like all the dads. It's like a, a carpool of dads who are like, oh god damn, we're so late. Our wives are gonna kill us, and then they're all just gunning it, uh, you know, down the road. That that in my head, that's what's happening right now. Boom, Angelina. I cut that corner tight. So you do have to kind of use your overhead map, I think, to kind of see where the next checkpoints are. Um, it is, it is an interesting, so in many racing games, like, you're on a closed circuit, so you really just kind of, like, follow the course, and then you, you, you beat it. This is actually really different, because you're, like, in such an open world. Boom! We won! Oh, and I think I went into the river still. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I think my guy went over the ridge into the river. This is a very different kind of racing game, because you actually have to pay attention to, like, where... Uh, where you have to go next, uh, you have to sort of watch your overhead map because if you miss a turn, you can just keep driving straight and you can just like get way off course. So it's very different than a normal uh, racing game. Anyway, let's hop to the menu here. Yes, I'm sure I want to quit. I know I have a very promising racing career, but uh, what I want to do, I really want to try and figure out where we are in the map. So like tricky at picky. Sure, sure. Okay, so hold on. Where the heck is that? Okay, I think I figured it out. So I think this circle here is DuPont Circle. And this other one here is... It's not labeled on the map. It's... I don't know, but the District Commons. Okay, I actually found it. So where the hell's the White House? Oh, it's... Okay, so wait, the white, that, that is the White House down there. Okay, so if we go, if we follow the race, basically before we get to the finish line, we want to turn left, and then we just want to gun it straight, and we'll hit the White House. Uh, we're totally doing that. So we get to race most of the race to see if we can, like, cut it. And wait, what's happening? Oh, that was weird. I, I, was, I was looking out my rearview mirror as I started the race. I guess my guy forgot that he should be facing forward. Anyway, off we go. Lead me to the White House race. I got a, I got a date with the president. Uh, oh, this way. Penguin Tuck Shop. Interesting. All right, we just did a burnout in front of that guy. He was like, oh, man, I should buy an Xbox. Everyone in this town is just like a uh, stone's throw away from purchasing their own Xbox. They're like, I, I heard this Xbox thing's pretty popular. Only the nerds aren't buying Xboxes. I better buy an Xbox. Everyone's buying Xboxes. Nicholas, me and you, man. We're both sucking together. We're both going to fail. Ah, forget it. I was going to say we'll fail together, but forget it. I, I'm not as big a loser as you, Nicholas. Have fun with Andy. You and Andy are made for each other, bro. Oh, man, we are, we are actually closing the ranks a little bit. Oh, God. <laughs> I just hit a, hit a meridian. Oh, Nicholas, I didn't mean it, man. I did not mean it. Just kidding, I did. Just kidding, I did. Eat it, Nicholas. Oh, man. I wish that when you, like, hit people, uh, like, un like ran them from the side, it actually, like, sh like, shook them a bit more and, like, could actually knock them off their axis. Oh, man. How are none of those people injured? They're just, like, trying to hold still, hoping I don't see them. Hoping I have the vision of a T-Rex. They're like, shh, if you don't move, he can't see. Angelina was having some trouble there. My God. Okay, are we... This is the end, right? This is the end. I don't want to finish. All right, we're going left. 
This is the plan. The plan all along was to look like we were racing, but psych, we were racing. We didn't care about racing at all, people. We were just using this race as a clever ploy to help me navigate my way to the White House because I would never be able to do it myself. All right, here we go. Kaboom! I hope White House security is really this lax in real life. Oh, man. What? You can't just drive up to the White House? That, that totally was the White House, though. Did you guys see that? Can we get in here? Hold on. The gates are locked. What kind of simulation is this? Hold on. Let's drive up. There you go. There's the White House. In all its white glory, I guess. Um, okay. Is there any way to get in there? Or no? It's just for show, eh? Just for showing. Oh, look. There's, like, other sort of big white buildings. I don't, know, I don't know what any of these buildings are. Is Abe Lincoln in this building? Can I come see him? Nope. We're in like the, the courthouse steps or something. Oh man, we just did like a nose dive into like the loading dock area. Uh, what else we got over here? What, I don't even know what's near the White House in real life. Except for people who don't know where Subways and McDonald's are. Because uh, that one time I went. Where are we here? Is this a place? I'm in a field. Do you guys know this field? What's over this way? Anything cool? Oh my god, there's a Washington Monument! Boom! Slam! Alright, we, we made it! We made it somewhere iconic! I'm mildly proud of us. We did it, guys. We, we I didn't believe in us, but maybe you guys did. Let's kind of zoom back here so we can get like a nice view of the monument. There it is, somewhere. Where'd it go? There it is. Can't even like see it in your camera. I can't like look up. That like looks behind. Oh wait, there it is! There's why that is a tall monument, man. Can we get like really far away from it and look at it? Let's see. I don't even know what's over here. Let's continue to explore. Explore the downtown of Washington, D.C. The heart of American Americanism. It's over here. Anything cool? Is there is there a landmark from Forrest Gump? If so, I will recognize it. Probably. Maybe. Um uh, what is wait, what is this? Is this a jump? Is this the, the famous George Washington historic jump. Wee hoo! I hope that's really in DC. Um, anything? No. Let's see if we can see the monument. No. So the interesting thing about the monument is it's this giant structure, but the draw distance of the Xbox obviously has limits. So like you can't even see it until it's so big. I bet we'll not even see it until it's so big it doesn't even like fully fit on our screen. Yep, there it is. See. So if we actually had proper draw distance, we'd be able to see it from a long way away. Um, I guess actually the Washington Monument was also in Spider-Man Homecoming. So I know landmarks from both Forrest Gump and Spider-Man Homecoming. Two of the the movies. The two whole movies I know landmarks from. Um, actually, I could probably name a third. Not off the top of my head, but I'm sure there is a third movie with landmarks. And I know it. Um, what is over here? I'm just so fascinated. Like, what is this building? What is this building? Like, now that we actually found a place with this stuff. We're not just driving through, like, residential neighborhood 21-A. Uh, yeah, th these are, like, Washington-ish looking buildings. All right, well, we successfully raced a race and a half. We could have won that second one, but we threw it away to do some sightseeing. It's like my, my driver guy, like, halfway through the race realized he hadn't done any sightseeing in D.C. yet, and he was like, that's more important than winning. You know what's more important than winning, Vin Diesel? Seeing the sights of the world. Um, let's pop over to a race in Paris, or not a race, but like an undercover assignment. I really want to know like what these undercover missions are like in this game. All right, so enough of that, enough of that, and enough of that. Let's work undercover. We're becoming a working girl or guy in this case, becoming a working dude in the city of Paris. You must be my new inspector. Take a seat and listen up. Impress me, and you'll earn your new badge. What? This is Dieter Kleinmann. Legendary race car driver. Kleinman is coming to Paris to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. And it's going to be your job to keep him safe. Fans come from all over the world just to see Kleinman. To hear him. To smell him. To That's smell him? Got you working undercover as a delivery driver. I need you all over Paris. Deliver back some good information. I'd hate to see you fail. So... I've been recruited by the cops to pretend to be a delivery driver to drive around to somehow protect a guy that people want to smell. Well, I guess let's do it. Hello there, and welcome to your new job as a delivery driver. 
here. Are they like making fun of French people? I don't get it. Over Paris. And just because I am new doesn't mean you can push me around, okay? That is like the most over the top, ridiculous French accent I've ever heard. Okay, this is our morning route. Pick up parcels and deliver them to destinations. Uh, hey Matilda here, you want to be in some box throwing contests? If so, come see me. And Sven's parcel, Scandinavian race fan Sven has forgotten a parcel in the bus station. Go and get it, deliver it to the hotel. Again, what does that have to do with with the French guy that we're supposed to like? We're hired muscle to protect him, uh, and we're going on like a. It's basically just a race, I guess. I don't. I don't fully understand this mode. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see the difference. Um, I know landmarks in Paris way less than DC. I mean, I know the Eiffel Tower. Uh, what movie do I know that from? I don't know. I don't know what movie I know that from, so I don't know why I know what the Eiffel Tower is, but uh, the Eiffel Tower is is a thing in Paris, and also, is that, like, White Gate in Paris, the, like, uh, the archway? Um, we're driving ahead of you? We're ramming you? What else should should I be doing? Oh, God. Okay, we're driving, we're taking a shortcut on the sidewalks here. Yeah, there's, like, a, there's, like, an archway or something in Paris that I think is a thing. Get out of my way, Matilda. Ugh. Do we have to like deliver more parcels than her or just the same amount? <laughs> also, I like how to deliver the parcel. We drove by a building going at about 100 miles an hour and just toss, we chucked the box out the window at high speed. That's like all we did. What, what, why would I pay for it? I, I don't understand if we're supposed to be competitive with Matilda or like we're on the same team. But uh, yeah, this is just sort of interesting. I guess it's kind of like racing, but not quite. It's very, very similar. Uh, there's your stupid, uh, you know, antique China package delivered. This is like what they thought being an Amazon delivery man was would be like in the future. Oh God. Um, little did they know that we would have drone technology and the drones would be doing all our deliveries. All the, all the like, little flying robots would be delivering things for us. Boom. Is there, like, a certain time? Oh, she threw a sign at us. Is there a certain amount of time we have to do this in? Or is it just, like, you know, whenever? I imagine this, this might be what it's like for Amazon delivery people. Because they have such tight delivery windows. It's, like, sometimes... You order something and it's like you're guaranteed to get it in like 24 hours or something. Um, I, I don't know how Amazon does that. Like how do they always have everything that you need in the world within 24 hours from your house? That That is some, you know, think about that. Literally anything you could ever want. Amazon has it and it's less than a day away from your house. Um, now they may be flying it, so there might be some distance to cover, but nonetheless, it's still like only a day away. Only a day away. It's weird to think that, you know, like there was a time in, in human society when, uh, you know, like in medieval times and stuff, like if you wanted a chicken and there were no chickens, you know, around, you just didn't get a chicken. But nowadays you just, I mean, chicken's a bad example. You can't order one of those from Amazon, but you know what I mean? I mean, you could go to the grocery store, and get a cooked chicken, like a rotisserie chicken. That's possibly even better than the raw chicken. You know, and if you want the, if you wanted the chicken for eggs, you can get the eggs. Like there's really... Oh, my, my controller's vibrating on this cobblestone road. That's actually kind of cool. A nice little touch. Um, but yeah, you can really get whatever you want. Oh, we were racing her. I'm not surprised. Look at her face. They caught her like mid-sentence. Um, should we try? Let's try that again. I didn't know that we were supposed to be racing her. Okay, let's try that one more time. I, I, I kind of get the sense that, like, these undercover missions, um, like, th they add, like, a nice facade to the racing, but it still just is a one-on-one -on -one race. I mean, functionally, it's not really any different from, uh, from, you know, oh, God, the actual racing. I think we're going to lose again. If she gets a significant lead on us, we'll just bail. We'll just quit. Because I can't stand to lose to Matilda twice. Oh my god, we're doing horrible. Doing horrible. This is the first mission, by the way. So, like, uh, I I fully accept that I'm driving terribly. But I will say that for the first mission, isn't the AI supposed to take it easy on you? Aren't you, aren't you supposed to have a few freebies before the game actually picks up? That's how most games work. 
Maybe I'm racing so badly that, like, this is the computer racing on easy. And, uh, it's not going so well, Jay. Like, you really suck, bro. Um, it's, it's totally possible. I am kind of catching up to her, though, so maybe the AI is taking pity on me. It's, it's programmed with mercy. They were like, hey, man, if, uh, if the, comp if the, if the human really sucks, you just gotta go easy. <laughs> the packages are just rolling through the street. I like how in, in the world of Midtown Madness, that's delivered. Your package was delivered. It is rolling down Midtown Avenue in a strong breeze. <laughs> you get that notification on your phone. Amazon has delivered your package. It's on 2nd Street. It's been, uh, it's rolled down the street and, uh, it was kicked by a dog. Good luck. <laughs> Let us know if you want to return it. Uh, all right. Matilda, she's kicking our butt still. I, I just can't maintain a lead on her. At least give her a jalopy. We're like racing in the same car. I'm not ready for an, an equally matched opponent yet. I need, I'm, I'm still in the baby phase, the training wheel. Like I, I need an opponent who's driving a worse car than me and who is a worse driver than me. Uh, if I had those two things, then this game would be fair. But I don't, therefore the game sucks. I'm just kidding. Whoa! Oh man, get out of my way, Xbox dude. Get out of my way. Even people in Paris are like oddly obsessed with Xboxes. Oh, she's just waiting. She's just waiting. Go, go, go. No, Matilda! No, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, break, do something. If, if, God, if there's only some kind of terrain, if there's a nitro, something. Oh, and a car pulled out in front of me. Hold on. No, we failed. I, I can't say that I'm surprised. And the guy has the, the audacity to rear end me, get in a car accident. All right, well, so the undercover missions are basically just one-on-one -on -one races with sort of uh, this this flair. Um, Want to be in a box throwing contest? You know, let's try. Let's try one more. Let's see if we can uh, uh, watch out for Matilda. Uh, okay, I don't want to race against Matilda again. Let's just try the Marauders. Uh, we'll try this one one more time, just to sort of see. Uh, what I, one, one more thing I would like to do is kind of actually do a, a drive at night. Because there are all those like neat features. You could drive in winter, and you could drive like in fall, at night. There could be rain, all sorts of stuff. Oh, there we go. A whole, a whole gang of folks. I like this. I like how it's not just me now. Boom! Delivered a box! <laughs> There's your damn package. God. Things are dangerous in Paris. Oh, you know what movie I just realized uh, takes place partially in Paris is Inception. Pretty sure at one point they're sitting in like a Paris cafe. So uh, there you go. So I do know Paris because there is a movie that takes place in Paris. And again, all my knowledge of the world comes from movies. If movies didn't exist, I would be, um, I'd probably be a hermit. I prob I'd probably have very little world knowledge um, you know, I just, I, I wouldn't be a complete person. Oh, man, Matilda, she is, and, and Juliet, get back here. I, I, at least there's like more than just Matilda. So Jean-Michael, Juliet, Matilda, I mean, they're all kicking my butt pretty much, but, ugh, wait, this is good for me. I'm first. Uh, but at least when there's more opponents, it's like, it's not just like a, a shellacking. You know, I can actually maybe be as long as I beat one opponent, I feel like we've we've made progress. We are actually beating everyone right now, which is astonishing. It is mind blowing. Boom. Oh, that was even the right way to go. I thought we made a mistake by going that way. We'll go this way too. You know what I think the mistake that I was making before is I was relying on my e brake too much, but I'm not even braking, I'm just letting off the gas and make turns. And I'm actually doing my turns a lot better now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't let it end this way. Not like this. Oh, I'm going even the wrong way here. Boom. Oh, I finished first. Damn. All right. We, we kicked Matilda's butt, which means we should quit while we're ahead. If I've learned anything from my, uh, you know, four years of playing retro games. So when your head just quit, you'll feel much better about yourself. The Kleinman issue. Um, all right, let's pop back out here. And Paris was okay, but I'm just, I don't know. As a North American, 
I find European cities, they, they are kind of cool. Oh yeah, those, there's that gate, by the way, I was talking about. They feel sort of very foreign and different. I like driving around cities that look like cities that I actually live in because it feels more like kind of fantasy wish fulfill fulfillment kind of thing. Um, I'm actually kind of curious what the missions are in DC. I want to see this cutscene. Hey, I, I got a song that's in your key. Stefano and Michael Tortellini, the famous film producers, are coming to town to shoot their latest action film titled The Quick and the Slippery. Everybody the Quick and the Slippery? Is it an adult film? For an Oscar, I want you to do a little work behind the camera. A rival hotshot producer is in town and I want to keep everything in focus. I need you hanging all over the place like smoke in a pool hall. Why am I being Where recruited by like a 1930s film noir detective? Let's see what kind of script we can write. Okay. So you get to be a pizza delivery guy. This is the real dough pizza company. Why is this guy French too? Or no, he's Italian. Now that the Tortellini brothers are in town. Okay, whatever. We're delivering pizzas. Um, I like to imagine that when you deliver pizza, you just huck it out the window of your car the same way we were delivering boxes in Paris. Um, all right, well, let's go to... You know, one thing we have not tried is a Blitz. So in the interest of completeness, let's go ahead and try a Blitz. Wait, wait. Was it a Blitz? Race against your favorite cars. No, we have not tried... We've done a Cruise. We've done a Blitz. Wait, competitor? No, we haven't done a blitz. Race against time. Yes. Okay, we're gonna do a blitz in Washington D.C. Uh, we have all these different tracks. I think we did that one, and we could have done that one. How about let's do the green tour? It just looks so much more confusing, but let's give it a shot. Green tour. Oh no, but we can't set the timer, the time of day and stuff. Okay, sorry, I f forget it. Blitz is just racing against time. We're gonna go ahead and cruise in Washington because we want to be able to set all this stuff. We want. Let's say very heavy traffic, very dense pedestrians. Let's bump up the cops. I don't know what that's going to do. Let's go ahead and I, I like keeping it summer. Uh, I'm, I'm so curious about winter though. Okay, you know what? We're going to make it winter. We're going to make it night and make it snowing. Okay, we're turning all the features on. This is the, the, the Xbox is going to be struggling to render this one. We're going to go cruising in a garbage truck. Because why the heck not? Garbage, garbage truck with the license plate of gamers with a Z. Because it's uh, the 90s, man. It's actually the early 2000s. Whatever. It's, uh, you know, radical lifestyle forever. Work Press start. Alright, we're, ra we're driving at night in a dump truck with cops everywhere in Washington, D.C. And you can turn your lights on and off. There you go. And there's cars everywhere. Oh, but we just smashed through them because we have a dump truck. Kind of want to go to the White House now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't even see the mayhem that's ensuing. Oh, I'm like pushing a car there. I need like another view. Hold on. Out of the way. All right, let's do this view. This is very low to the ground, though. Smash. Smash. It's actually really satisfying. You know what, I'm kind of curious to see what a race with dump trucks is like. Okay, I said this was going to be the last thing we did, but... I mean, you guys get the gist. It is kind of cool, you can set like different times of year and different amounts of traffic and stuff. Uh, but I kind of want to like race a dump truck. That That's what we should really end on. Alright, let's, let, let's do that. Alright, enough cruising. That took like two seconds, but I apologize because we need to have a dump truck race. The good old classic Washington DC dump truck race. And that is it. Mass, extreme durability, extreme handling, terrible. Acceleration, terrible. Top speed, terrible. Sold. And give me some good dump truck colors. No, we don't have a lot to pick from. I guess red it is. Automatic, an automatic transmission dump truck. And we're gonna redeem ourselves on the race that we could have won but we got distracted by sightseeing. And yeah, off we go. <laughs> it's like a cement mixer, a dump truck, and oh, there's like a tractor trailer even. This is hilarious. Fred's in a dump truck too. We're all in dump trucks. Oh, people are getting like stuck on the walls already. That is awesome. If anyone was like driving around just a normal person on the streets and they saw like 
six racing dump truck, cement truck mixer, tractor trailer trucks driving around. They that that would be a terrifying thing to see. Kaboom! Kaboom! I'm trying to like block him. You know what's interesting about racing dump trucks is it's like racing in slow motion because nobody can go fast. So you have like a lot of time to plan your moves. It's like it's like the most strategic who knew? Racing a dump truck is like the most strategic form of racing ever. Because it's not about speed. You have a lot of time to think about your next move and what you're going to do. Like, how are we going to pass Angelina? In fact, she's pulling away from us. This is bogus. This is, well, what, what's happening here? We're, we're racing similar quality trucks. Why does her truck go so much faster? I think because she does not have... It's like a tractor trailer and it's missing the load. And in which case, those babies can move. But I'm like a dump truck still carrying the dump. That's unfair, man. Come here, Angelina. I have no strategy for beating her. I'm just relying solely on luck. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, as we continue the slowest of slow races, we should uh, start wrapping up our thoughts on Midtown Madness 3 here. Midtown Madness 3, of course, is one of the games in the book, 1001 video games you must play before you die. And I have to say, like, as far as racing games go, like, I honestly kind of like this one. Um, I never played it back in the day. Did not have it on my Xbox back when I... Oh, shoot. Had an Xbox. We done messed up real bad. We done messed up real bad. Um, I did not have this one on my Xbox. It is a little tricky because, like, as far as racing games go, most racing games have you on a closed track, so you can't really, uh, like, just drive a block too far or miss a turn. But in this game, you can. So definitely there's a bit of a learning curve in terms of watching your radar, watching that arrow above you, kind of learning the courses. So it's a very different kind of racing game in a weird way than, than other racing games. But I, I like it. It's, it's interesting. It's different. Um, pretty much every single mode is just racing. You know, whether it's a checkpoint, uh, I mean, Cruise is the only one that has no point. But whether it's a checkpoint or undercover, you know, like any of those modes, they're all just facades to get you racing. But that said, um, it's still kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I don't think it's like necessarily the best racing game I've ever played. And it kind of reminds me of just sort of racing missions in Grand Theft Auto or something like that. Uh, it kind of also reminds me a bit of like Burnout, except in Burnout, you were on a closed circuit. You were driving on real streets, but you could actually like wipe out and kill people. And actually, I like that better. So I think Burnout is a better game than Midtown Madness. But like as far as, you know, like racing games go, like if I had this for the, my Xbox, I certainly would have played it. And I certainly would not have really uh, complained about it. It seems sort of like an interesting game with some interesting things. I also do kind of wish there were more cities. And again, like... Washington, D.C. is fine. Paris is fine. But, like, Chicago, New York would have been cool. I mean, I'm biased, but Toronto would have been amazing. But, like, who are we kidding? Nobody's ever going to digitize Toronto for a racing game. But as a, as a native Torontonian, that'd be cool. Um, you know, back when I was playing uh, a lot of the first division, which takes place in New York City, I always wondered, like, how accurate the city was. You know, like, if people who lived in New York could walk by their apartment and, like, see it and, like, have a firefight near it. And I always kind of wish that, like, it had actually taken place in, like, Toronto or something. Because then I could actually judge if, uh, if it was accurate. And I could have a firefight in front of my, uh, you know, where I lived and stuff like that. But, uh, anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked here. Midtown Magistry, I think it's kind of a cool game. Um, I appreciate what the book was saying about how, like, DLC and stuff uh, really added on to this game. But, unfortunately, I can't, you know, try that out. So I can't attest to whether or not that's true. I assume it is. Um, it's rather, it's in a rather unfortunate quirk though, it brings up an important part of this 1001 quest that, you know, some, some of these games that the book is recommending pretty much do not exist anymore in the form that made them cool back in the day. So, um, I can only judge Midtown Madness on what I have seen today. And from what I've seen, it's a reasonable game. Anyway, what do you guys think of Midtown Madness 3 here? Is it a game that you yourself had back in the day? Is it a game that you had played or you have fond memories of? Uh, is it a game that looks terrible and you would never try it? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments down below. I always enjoy hearing your guys' take on things. And uh, we are drawing near our 400th episode. That's something uh, that is coming up for the channel soon, which is kind of a big deal for the channel. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys will tune back in soon for uh, the next game. And I hope whatever you think of this game, uh, you guys had some fun today. If I made you smile, made you laugh again, please feel free to like that video. 
Uh, please feel free to share it, in fact, with all your friends and colleagues and all that. Until we meet again, my friends, you keep playing old games, and I will too. And uh, otherwise, take care of yourselves. Peace. There's an Xbox in my Xbox. Is that meta?